Hey, honey, you ready to talk about the Ferengi on YouTube? No, I don't want to talk about the fucking Ferengi. What is even is a Ferengi? I have no idea what's going on with this crap. What am I supposed to say about it? I'm get yeah, they look weird, and what's with their teeth and the structure of I w what would I even say about? While Ferengi have ventured through the stars in search of profit and advantageous business arrangements, official first contact with the Federation did not occur until 2364. In the following decade, Ferengi can be found nearly anywhere there is profit to be made. Nearly all of Ferengi culture, government, and beliefs are based around the acquisition and retention of wealth, earning them a reputation as greedy, duplicitous, and conniving merchants and conmen. While some Ferengi are not obsessed with wealth or self-promotion, they are few and far between and are looked down upon by other Ferengi. With a society devoted to business and trade, there is little central government outside of business and regulatory functions. The Ferengi Alliance is, in reality, a collection of corporate and private businesses and their territorial holdings. The Ferengi Alliance maintains no standing military, relying on privateers and alliances with other species. Ferengi culture is extremely chauvinistic, with females considered a form of property, forbidden to engage in business, own property, receive inheritance, or even wear clothes. That does not, however, stop ambitious and dedicated Ferengi women, and given the current state of galactic affairs, the time for change may be coming. The Ferengi Alliance is comprised of a humanoid species, the Ferengi, who worship money above all else. There is very little a Ferengi businessman will not do for the feel of gold-pressed latinum in the palm of his hand, and this striving for more and more profit has left the Ferengi people stifled with many archaic laws, such as how they treat women. While the Alliance seems to be amidst a social and political change, it remains to be seen if their shrewd businessmen can make the changes necessary for progress. Ferengi are a humanoid species with dark orange skin tones and large cranial orbs and sharp teeth. They have large ears which contain thousands of nerve endings and give Ferengi superior auditory perception. Ferengi are able to hear sounds so accurately they can discern the exact decibel measurement of a sound. A holdover from early Ferengi evolution, the species is also able to emit high-pitched screams, most often when frightened. Early Ferengi were able to reach an perceptible pitch, which Ferengi can hear, but is inaudible to their predators. This, combined with their keen wit, allowed them to survive the many dangers on Ferenginar and become the dominant species. To understand Ferengi political structure, you must understand that they consider politics and economics one and the same. Societies are formed from agreed-upon business practices, laws or contracts, and political motivation is always profit. These, this unique view on how politics works enabled the Ferengi Alliance to prosper and place them among the wealthiest people within known space. The leader of the Ferengi Alliance is the Grand Nagus. He is appointed by his predecessor and is only required to answer to the Ferengi Commerce Authority's Board of Liquidators. The Grand Nagus ensures that the Ferengi Alliance remains strong in profits and is in charge of finding new business deals which can benefit his people. Finally, he is in charge of the upholding the Ferengi Bill of Opportunities. The Ferengi Bill of Opportunities is a document outlining the rights of all Ferengi people. It defines who is allowed to do business and the proper way in which to conduct business. Many aliens are surprised to find that such a bill exists and is rarely mentioned compared to the rules of acquisition. However, where the rules of acquisition explain how a Ferengi must conduct himself morally, in the end, the Bill of Opportunities defines how he must conduct himself legally. After the Grand Nagus, the most important governing structure of the Alliance is the Ferengi Commerce Authority, FCA, which oversees Ferengi business practices. While the Grand Nagus himself also plays a large role in these, the FCA deals with the Ferengi trade bylaws, making sure they are up to date and enforced across worlds. The FCA also has the ability to overthrow the appointment of a new Grand Nagus if they believe that the person chosen will bring bad business to the Alliance. Like all other aspects of Ferengi political structure, their laws center around profit. For many Ferengi, the laws in place are more of a loose guideline meant to be tempered by the rules of acquisition, which are the real laws of society. If a Ferengi gets away with stealing a transport full of Slogo Cola from their competitors, they haven't broken the law, they are simply a smart businessman having gained profits while spending minimal resources. However, if they get caught stealing, then not only is the Ferengi a poor businessman, but will literally have to pay the price. The most basic form of solving any Ferengi legal dispute is plea bargaining. If you've taken something from someone else, you are expected to give them something in return of equal or greater value. During plea bargaining, it is up to the offending and offended party to negotiate a favorable deal for themselves. If you've been stolen from and you don't manage to negotiate back what was stolen, that is your own fault and you deserve what you've received. 
For anything other than minor offenses, cases are taken to a council of arbiters who will judge the case. If you are found guilty, a portion of your profits will be taken. This can be a one-time fee for seriously heinous crimes. The government can take percentage of your profits or even your family's profits for any number of years. Once decided, this fee is never lessened and something such as a good behavior, after all, once you have their money, you never give it back. Finally, the highest form of punishment for a Ferengi is revoking his business license. This means he is no longer able to trade within the Ferengi Alliance and it is worse than a death sentence. If this happens to a Ferengi, he is ostracized from society, from his family, and loses his one reason to live. This sentence is rarely handed out, but often threatened in court, to make the offending party agree to a worse deal for the fee than they are required to pay. Greedy, self-serving, and cowardly. These words have been uttered by many a Starfleet cadet the first time they are tricked by a Ferengi. Their voracious need to turn a profit by any means necessary means they can make shaky allies, and more than once they've betrayed deals with the Federation when a better opportunity came along. And if one objectively looks at the amount of credits a single Ferengi will earn in his life, on average, it is hard to argue with results. It would be foolhardy to, dis to dismiss this species because of their apparent greed. It came as a surprise to many that the Ferengi have a vital role in the discovery of the Gamma Quadrant. While this is obviously motivated by the search of bigger and better profits, their role should not be minimized. The rules of acquisition are a morality text written by Gint, the first Grand Nagus, and are followed by most Ferengi. For Ferengi, morality in business is everything, Ferengi morality being the apex of any civilized thought. The rules of acquisition outline how a Ferengi should conduct business, therefore their life, and are taught to every Ferengi boy by their mother from a very early age. Critics of the rules of acquisition also point to them being one of the key reasons female Ferengi are still subjugated today. Many of the rules dismiss women's intelligence and importance. Almost every person who has met a Ferengi knows at least one of the 285 rules of acquisition as the species quotes them at every opportunity. Sometimes the rules are used as justification for devious actions on a Ferengi's behalf, but other times they are quoted as warnings, shows of good faith, or even apologies between two Ferengi. Perhaps the most important rule for Ferengi to know is Rule 190, here all trust nothing. While many non-Ferengi assume all of these moral Ferengi rules have no application in day-to-day -day life, there can be wisdom found in them especially when dealing with the Ferengi themselves. Listen to what the Ferengi have to say, but keep in mind there is perhaps only a slip of truth in what they say. If you manage to memorize only a handful of the rules, you'd be well on your way to a deeper understanding of how the Ferengi conduct business. Remember, everything a Ferengi says should be taken with a grain of salt. After all, a contract is a contract only between Ferengi. Along with the 285 rules of acquisition, there are many discourses, addendums, and unofficial rules which permeate Ferengi society. The most classic of these are the five stages of acquisition, guidelines based on the rules which impart knowledge upon onto a businessman on how people are likely to react when they wish to acquire something. According to the Ferengi, the five stages of acquisition are infatuation, justification, appropriation, obsession, and resale. Infatuation occurs when a person first sees or hears about an item. It is their raw desire for the product. To aid a smooth transaction, the item should appear as rich and luxurious as possible, while costing a fraction of the price it appears. Justification is a person convincing themselves they should have the item. It is the internal dialogue in a person's head, which should be aided by the Ferengi with his above-par skills at salesmanship. Appropriation is a person purchasing the item if a merchant has done his job in aiding the infatuation and justification. The person should pay much more for the item than it is actually worth. Obsession is a person enjoying the item they have purchased. This should occur for exactly long enough for either the next stage to occur or the merchant to be safe legally or physically from any retribution if it breaks. Resale is the person either reselling the item if they are a smart Ferengi or most likely throwing it away if they are a stupid alien. Ferengi religious philosophers say this text goes much deeper than the earning of profit, but digs into the heart of the great material continuum as a representation of Ferengi's lifespan. Infatuation, the Ferengi is conceived. Justification, the Ferengi learns at his mother's side. Appropriation, the Ferengi starts his journey towards profit. Obsession, the Ferengi becomes a master of his field. Resale, the Ferengi returns to the divine treasury to negotiate his next life. Rather than, than an impressive military force, the Ferengi encourage their own array of pirates, privateers, and marauders, all of whom are technically under the oversight of the Grand Nagus, and negotiate deals with other nations in order to protect themselves. There is much profit in war, but no profit if you die. Rather, Ferengi prefer to facilitate other species fighting and killing one each other while safely staying away from any action. 
Unlike other cultures, where battle or physical prowess is prized, the Ferengi look down on someone who is too fit or focuses too much on battle. They are the polar opposites of the Klingons, for example, who gain much of their honor through tests of strength. Getting into a fight means you weren't smart enough to talk yourself out of getting hurt, and a Ferengi who can't talk themselves out of a fight doesn't have the lobes for business. If the Ferengi are forced into a fight, they, were, they will rely on guerrilla tactics and deception to win the day. You will never face a straightforward battle with the Ferengi, and they would never expect you to play by the same rules either. If you ever happen to start a fight with a Ferengi cruiser you can't finish, make sure you have something they want, because only an interesting business proposition will stop them from disabling your shields and robbing you blind as a fee for their triumph over you. Ferenginar is a Class M planet covered in swamps, buzzing with bugs, and the Ferengi homeworld. Many Ferengi believe it is the most beautiful planet in the galaxy, a rival to the beaches of Risa, not because of its sights, but because of its soul. Boasting such sights as the Tower of Commerce and the impressive tomb of Grand Nagus Bork, there is no better place for a businessman to turn a profit. Unlike many planets in this quadrant, Ferenginar has a cold, wet climate. It rains 87% of the year, and most of the terrain is large swaths of swampland. There are very few natural oceans on the planet, but water lands do make up roughly 70% of the planet's terrain. Closer to the equator, rains increase as do temperatures, making the climate there warmer than on the rest of the planet. The sky is mostly cloudy, and on good days the sun is barely visible. To make up for the lack of sun, the Ferengi have solar walkways with lights mimicking the natural rays of the sun. It costs a slip of latinum to enter and exit the walkway, a price most Ferengi aren't willing to pay for a bit of useless light. The walkways have proven useful when entertaining off-worlders for business deals on Ferenginar, during which time the prices to use the walkways seem to skyrocket to 10 slips of latinum to enter and 15 to exit. The Ferengi have colonized most of their homeworld and caged many of the creatures wandering the land. Parents wishing to bring their children to see creatures in their natural habitat must pay to enter one of the local natural viewing attractions. During the day, children are able to see shows performed by the adorable four-armed nocturnal swamp sloth and pet any number of hermit serpents. At night, they can take a tour, for a small fee, of course, through the natural viewing attraction and see the animals in their natural habitat, lit by 100% Ferengi-built solar lamps for ease of viewing. Straying too far from civilized areas, you are likely to encounter any number of different insects, which are found in abundance in the Ferengi homeworld. These range from small grubs, which are a common Ferengi delicacy and farmed around the planet, to giant mosquitoes who can exsanguinate a fully grown Vulcan in just under three minutes. Ferengi are able to hear the giant mosquitoes of their homeworld coming from miles away, thus keeping them safe from these natural predators. Offworlders are, however, not as fortunate. Most merchants on the planet sell small hearing devices for aliens to keep them safe in the wilderness. The final creature worth mentioning in this report is part fable, part real creature. While the swamp worm's name is rather unassuming, its legacy is not, and something akin to dragons in Earth's history. However, swamp worms were once very real. Measuring over 30 meters in length with giant maws that could swallow a Ferengi whole, these giants were once the apex predator on Ferenginar. As Ferengi society developed, they invented weapons to draw out the worms and systematically wipe them out. Today, there are no swamp worms left on Ferenginar, but sometimes reports still surface claiming entire wilderness parties missing as if they were swallowed whole by something. Cities in Ferenginar are comprised of any number of low buildings which make up homes, markets, and trade hubs for the Ferengi. Pleasure areas filled with umox lounges, bars, and restaurants dot the city landscape and even have a place in rural areas, just outside where most of the farming takes place. From an outsider's perspective, Ferengi buildings don't look like much. They are purpose-built to resist rain and stay above the swampy ground they are built upon. There's a saying on Ferenginar, the cheaper and uglier the slug, the more delicious the meat. And this saying certainly applies to homes in the area. The more austere and ugly the outside of a home or building, the more amazingly luxurious the inside. Walls gilded in real gold, diamond chalices, latinum decorations, the inside decor of a Ferengi's home is a look into his mind, and his mind is always lined with treasure. The Tower of Commerce is a large domed structure and one of the most well cared for buildings in all of Ferenginar next to the home of the Grand Nagus. The Ferengi issue places of worship related to their faith, but all who behold this great building know it is a temple dedicated to greed, avarice, and trade. The lower levels of the tower house the Ferengi Market Exchange, 
Weapons aren't allowed on the trading floor, but it is advisable to wear at least some form of armor or energy shield when entering. Fights between traders break out on a nearly hourly basis, as tensions run high on the floor. These fights are normally no more than scuffles, but as the feeling of rage and frustration spreads through the floor, it can break into an all-out melee. The most successful men on the floor have learned dodge, weave, and bob throughout the floor to seal deals. The very top of the dome is the domain of the FCA. Most liquidators have an office in this building, and the offices are organized from the most important to least important. An important liquidator will have a larger office higher up, and a less successful liquidator will have an office lower and closer to the entrance, so they have to deal with the riffraff who would dare enter the liquidator's domain. Offices change regularly, and most furniture is on wheels to accommodate a quick move so it doesn't get in the way of the liquidator doing his job. The sacred marketplace is a shopper's dream with hundreds of market stalls piled atop one another, winding at least 15 floors beneath ground, packed with exotic wares from all over the quadrant and beyond. Anything a consumer can dream up is sold in the market, and if it isn't, it can be ordered, for a nominal price, of course. If a person doesn't feel like shopping, there are hundreds of hollow lounges, bars, and umax dens to tantalize and treat them for weeks. At the epicenter of the sacred marketplace is a small outdoor mushroom bloom park with golden bench, where Grand Nagus Gint first came up with the rules of acquisition. Inspired by the hustle and bustle of the marketplace around him, he realized there were universal truths when it came to trade. Better yet, these universal truths could be turned into a book and sold to others who wanted to turn a profit. Ferengi can pay a fee of 50 strips of gold-pressed latinum to sit on the Grand Nagus golden bench for a minute. Men who press their cheeks into the indent left by the Grand Nagus's behind feel a tingle in their lobes. This sensation is memory of the Grand Nagus brilliance being imparted onto the Ferengi sitting on the chair. Merchants around the park will tell many visitors that the bench is not the original, but a forgery, and that they have the authentic bench in their back room, which you can sit on for a fee, of course. However, Gint's family who owns the bench assure customers the bench is 100% genuine. Life revolves around the great material continuum, and at its heart is latinum. Ferengi culture is based on navigating the currents of the Great Continuum and everything always comes back to making a profit. However, between the ebb and flow of Latinum, there is a great deal of nuance that aliens find difficult to understand. How does a Ferengi love his brother while still berating him? Why is a Ferengi loyal when his loyalty only should be to himself? Most aliens would assume that, because of a Ferengi's preoccupation with profit, they, cave, they care very little for their family. This would be a shallow assessment. Though they would hate it, most Ferengi would give up an opportunity to gain profit if their family was in peril. While these rapacious people love profit above all else, family is part of who they are, like the lobes upon their heads. Ferengi will deny this is true, and they would be smart to do so, because caring too much for things can lead to a loss of profits. Family becomes something people can use against you. Therefore, it is often ingrained in Ferengi culture to treat members of the family terribly, to overwork them, verbally abuse them, and rob them blind if they aren't smart enough to stop you. This makes family members strong, smart, and cunning. Plus, it keeps other opportunists from taking advantage of you because you appear to love your family too much. Many say a Ferengi man's first and last true love is his mother because Ferengi marriage is just another business deal. Marriage contracts last for five years, and grooms are expected to pay their fathers-in-law upon renewal and at the birth of their first son. Likewise, fathers only have rights over their male children by way of lease, needing to pay their fathers-in-law in order to keep their sons. The one constant in a Ferengi child's life, if the business transactions between father and grandfather go badly, is his mother. The woman who single-handedly raises him, educates him, and cares for him in every meaningful way aside from making profit. For all their wisdom in business deals, the Ferengi have proven short-sighted when it comes to the women of their species. Ferengi, Ferengi women are not allowed to earn profit, own property, or even wear clothes. They are considered property to be traded amongst men in order to bring more profit to their family. Further, family property traditionally passes on to the eldest son or brother in the absence of children. And again, women are forbidden from receiving inheritance. Females, as they are known by the men of their species, are expected to do only two things. Care for their sons and teach them the rules of acquisition. Very little is known about the life, thoughts, and opinions of Ferengi women because of the subjugation they endure. Many members of the Federation have tried to negotiate with the Ferengi for women's rights, but to no avail. The few Ferengi women who manage to hide enough money to flee their lives and gain asylum with any other species spend very little time looking back on their past lives. 
They prefer to live their lives free of the patriarchy they came from and focus on a brighter, more profitable future. Likewise, many philosophers and political thinkers spend much time questioning the Ferengi's subjugation of their women. Most Ferengi men will tell you it is because women don't have the lobes for business, that they are stupid, and therefore need to be protected. However, the most common non-Ferengi thoughts about it seem to be that the complete opposite. It seems clear that Ferengi men fear their women. From what anthropologists can gather from the limited interactions they've had with Ferengi women, is that they are just as sharp, if not sharper, at business than their male counterparts. Many wives, mothers, sisters, and daughters use their own subtle ways to keep their male counterparts from making poor business decisions, an art which needs the keenest wit to ply in a society as oppressive to women as the Ferengi. If Ferengi women were ever to be given equal rights as men, the alliance would undoubtedly reach new financial heights never dreamed of by the greediest Ferengi. After all, remember who teaches all Ferengi males the rules of acquisition, their mothers. There have been several attempts over the years to introduce reforms into Ferengi society from expanding beyond the mere acquisition of wealth to equal rights for women. These movements are often very short-lived, and even if they were supported by the great Nagus, adherence to them would largely depend on the views of the wealthiest and most prominent Ferengi in local space. Ferengi spiritual beliefs center on the great material continuum, which all creatures are a part of. In the material plane, the continuum is represented by supply and demand. Ferengi want things, other Ferengi have these things, there is an exchange, and the cycle is repeated. This cycle is seen in all things, trade, war, and even love. If anything can be said about the Ferengi, it is that they know how to enjoy the fruits of their labor. With most Federation citizens would consider gaudy displays of wealth, silks, jewelry, latinum-plated tooth sharpeners, a wealthy Ferengi will have in abundance. He employs servants to wait on his every need, drinks the best Andorian wine, and delights in the most hedonistic Holosuite programs. They know how to have a good time, and why shouldn't they? Say what you want about the Ferengi, but at their core they are hard workers, and everyone who works hard needs time to relax. It probably doesn't surprise you to know that the need for a Ferengi to enjoy themselves has led the species to creating some amazing inventions, and thus earning them profit. Alright, well now that that's over, you ready to uh, do a little umox? Hit like and subscribe.